Are you getting frustrated when colliders do not act as expected? Or the game gets more complicated with each new collider added? You might think there has to be a better way. And you are right. You need to have a proper strategy for what type of colliders used, for which task, and how they interact. I will share my collider strategy for my 2D game dungeon run. However, everything I say here will equally apply to 3D games. I can break up my strategy into three parts. Collider rolls, collider stacks, collider layering. This video I will dive into collider rolls. Hi, I'm Cory Code and let's jump right in. I break colliders into three different aspects. I define a collider firstly by its role. I want to answer what its function is, how it is related to other colliders. While a role has an owner object that should not define its function, the role and the owner object will demand the type, but not the other way around. There are two main groups of colliders in my game, spatial colliders and interaction colliders. Spatial colliders are either immovable objects, typically level elements like the ground, walls, chests, crates. Their type are simple static colliders without any rigid body attached. In my case, I used a tile map collider for the level and simple static colliders for the chest and barrels. Other spatial colliders are movable objects, which could be doors, platforms, controlled by scripts which attract kinematic rigid body colliders. Players and monsters or any mobs are also in the movable objects category, but they are typically controlled by the physics engine and uses rigid body colliders. Interaction colliders always have a related spatial collider, which they interact with. Event colliders interact with the player, which could trigger a cutscene or some visual effects like lowering lights upon entering a dungeon, or initiating a peaceful mode when entering a shop. Interactable colliders interact with the players mostly, but they also could interact with other mobs. They don't need any extra interaction like a key pressed on a keyboard, rather just simply entering the area. They can be a pressure plate to open a door or trigger a trap. Or they could be pickups like potions or coins. Damage colliders interact with movable and immovable objects, like players or mobs, but could be crates or even doors. They are attached to spike traps and be static trigger colliders, or moving traps, missiles, fireballs. They are kinematic trigger colliders, in my case. If you want physics to affect your missiles, rigid body colliders could be also used. Naturally, players or mobs' melee weapons, including claws and bite attacks, are also in this category. The type depends on the owner. The action collider is part of the player. It can interact with both movable or immovable objects, like switches, crafting tables, or even NPCs. They need activation by pressing a specific key on the keyboard or the controller. Using these roles will allow us to write simple reusable code to handle these interactions between game objects, like one pair of damager and damageable scripts, which can be added to any players, monsters, barrels or traps. However, you probably noticed some objects like the player need colliders of multiple roles. In my next video, I will show how to organize these into a collider stack structure. The link should be here as soon as the video is ready. Please subscribe to get notifications for future videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.